Um, this is, uh, we're here today on a request for court ordered services. Uh, we are conducting this through Zoom and I'm recording to the Zoom cloud. I don't have a court reporter this morning, so if anybody needs a copy, let me know and we'll make it available. Uh, all right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Todd Alvey on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present and ready to proceed, Your Honor. I do not believe that we will need any additional testimony today. We will be able to announce an agreement. Uh, Joel Jackson in for Brooks Barfield on behalf of Lucero Hidalgo, present ready, Your Honor. Stacey Zavala on behalf of the children. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Alvey, what have we worked out? Thank you, Your Honor. This is a Texas family first case. My understanding is that Ms. Lucero has met with the department workers and there has been a family plan of service that has been placed on file with the court. We would ask the court to approve that family plan of service order that Ms. Lucero work the services as agreed to uh, prior to today um, uh, and that um, she allow access for the family um, and to her home by the department and by Ms. Zavala, who's the ad litem. And you know, and the last thing is that Mr. Jackson says that Mr. Barfield has had limited contact, if any, with Ms. Lucero. Uh, and we will make sure, the department will make sure that Mr. Barfield has Ms. Lucero's contact information. All right, Ms. Lucero, um, is this what you've agreed to? You're going to work the services that are being requested of you, and you'll have to unmute for me. I cannot unmute. There you go. I can hear you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, so do you have Mr. Barfield's contact information? I don't. If it's not in the packet, if, if it's in the packet, I do. If it's not in the packet, then I don't. Okay, well, we'll someone's going to make sure that you have that information so that you can be in contact with him. Um, Mr. Jackson's just standing in for him today, so he won't be your regular attorney, but, um, you know, it's just important at some point that you talk with him. So, uh, also, I want to make sure you know who Ms. Zavala is. Um, Stacey, if you'll unmute, she, she may not be able to see you because you're not speaking. If you'll... Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Zavala is uh, the children's attorney, and she will periodically be reaching out to you or her office, and her assistant's name is Kelly. Um, if either one of those ladies gets, you know, is, is reaching out to you, it's because they need to make an appointment to see the children, um, and you need to be sure and respond to their calls and, and cooperate with uh, them meeting with the children, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, then. Um, I will approve the agreement miss let me just ask Ms. Avala, are you believe this is in the best interest of the children i do your honor yes all right do you have any other recommendation today not at this time okay all right then i will approve the family plan of service that's been developed and has been filed and i will order uh, Ms. lacero to work those services and i will sign an order for participation in a texas family first case um, so Ms. Lucero, I wish you the very best of luck. I will see you back July 23rd of 2024, and that'll be on a nine o'clock docket. So yes, that's just, it's kind of a check-in, you know, just to see how things are going and if there's anything we need to change up or add or, you know, just, just, you know, how the kids are doing, how you're doing, you know, everything. So it's, it'll be like today. We'll do that by Zoom. So you can log in and, uh, your attorney, and, and your caseworker, they'll all be able to tell you what time you need to log in, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I appreciate your cooperation, and I'll see you back in July. Yes, ma'am. Uh, have a good day. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all, and uh, okay. I'll see yeah, you, ma'am. Mr. Jackson. All right. Uh -huh. You are back. Judge, you uh, yeah. A new person watching today. His name is Eugene Graff, and I have not met Mr. Graff, but I understand that he is – uh, the, the new regional attorney in the Emerald area who's going to start handling some of these cases. So that, that we, was what Ms. Katie told me this morning, and I he was in the waiting room, so I let him into our session. So he's present with us this morning. So and I don't know, Mr. Graff, if you've got video. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, good morning. Uh, Mr. Alvey. We welcome uh, you. Thanks for thank you. Thank you for the welcome. I don't know how good my internet service is here this morning, but I uh, appreciate the welcome, and uh, I look forward to working with you all. Same, same is true for us. And 
Uh, where did you move? Did you uh, move to this region, to this area? I did, Your Honor. Uh, I relocated to Amarillo last week from uh, Vancouver, Washington, where I practiced in uh, child welfare law. Uh, they call it dependency in Washington. I did that uh, for about 21 years, um, representing both parents. I also represented DCYF uh, for about six years, um, been a guardian ad litem, did a little appellate work. Um, so hopefully um, Texas law in this regard will be a short learning curve. Um, but I hope to be an asset to the community. And uh, and again, I appreciate the welcome. Well, Vancouver, gosh, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And I guess you might as well just have a garage sale and sell all your rubber boots and your umbrella and your all your raincoats and anything that has to do with moisture, you might as well just get rid of it. Yeah, I left all that uh, in the Northwest, Your Honor. <laughs> it's good advice. I really hate to be the bearer of that news that... Uh, no, that's one of the reasons why we relocated down here. So we're looking forward to the drier climate and uh, hopefully a little bit warmer weather. Well, you'll have that for sure. And lots of sunshine. You know, that's, that's great that's the part about this part of Texas is we get lots and lots of sunshine. Unfortunately, we also get a lot of wind. So that's what I'm experiencing. Yes. You know, <laughs> that's okay, though. Spring is always the worst. You know, yeah. fall is a beautiful Indeed. time here. here. And and summers, uh, you know, I personally love summer here. It cools down at night. We we have kind of that desert climate, you know, and it it uh, we may get pretty hot during the day, but it it always cools down at night, which is really nice. So that's great. Uh, welcome to you. And if you have any questions or if there's anything we can help with, just let us know. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay. My coordinator is Miss Katie. She's logged in. Uh, you'll get to know her. I know. And, and anyway, any anything we can do, we're happy to help. Thank you so much. Ms. Zavala, who is on your screen, is, uh, I don't know technically, what what do you call your office, Stacey? I know what Randall County, but I'm not even sure what you guys have called your office. Um, uh, Potter County Guardian Ed Light. Okay. So Ms. Zavala is uh, our go-to as far as representing the children, um, mm -hmm. in, in, in attorney and guardian ad litem. Uh, unless she's got a conflict, which occasionally happens. Uh, she used to be in private practice and and did child protection work. So um, occasionally we have a hiccup in something and we appoint somebody else, but she's going to be a very familiar face. So Great. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. And, and we'll, you. we'll set your camera off and, and multitask or do whatever you need to do. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh -huh. uh, we are here today set for a hearing, uh, a compliance hearing in a court order services case. Uh, we are conducting this through Zoom and we are live streaming and I'm recording to the Zoom cloud. If you need a copy, let me know and we'll make it available. Okay, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Todd Alvey on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. I'm present ready to proceed, Your Honor. Christy Walker with uh, FBS Services uh, will be my main witness who will give us an update um, on the services that Ms. Bridgman is providing. If needed, we have Karen Bider, who's also the FIS worker for this case. All right. All right. I'm Tate Elder, Your Honor. I'm here on behalf of Kylie Bridgman, and she's present ready. We're both present ready. Stacy Zavala on behalf of Asher. Okay, um, then Ms. Walker, if you could give us an update, how are things going? Good morning. Um, they're going really good. Kylie has completed all six sessions of her individual counseling. She uh, participated in counseling with Dolores Henders. The only recommendation that Dolores had upon discharging her was her just to follow up with additional individual counseling if for some reason um, she felt like she needed it. Uh, Kylie has talked about um, getting counseling set up through TPC because she has a case manager at TPC, and she's also receiving her medications through TPC. So she had talked about um, getting on the wait list at TPC. That way that counselor is available. Um, she's also participating in peer groups at TPC. Um, these are peer groups that she leans on um, during a rough time. Um but the last that was reported to me, she was participating at least twice a month in those. Um, so she would call, see when that next meeting was, see when she could set up one, and then she would set up one. Um, she is still working the St. Francis um, 
Texas First program with Karen Bider. Um, she's in phase two of that. And so she is continuing to make progress with that. Um, she has completed anger management through our Bennett Court Solutions. It's an online course. She has completed that course and she has initiated a parenting course that is specific to Asher's age. Um, so she's currently working on that and should be finishing up that pretty soon. Um, and that's, I mean, that's all the services that she's been working. Okay, sounds good. All right, Mr. Eldridge. I don't, I don't have any questions, John. It sounds like everything's going great. Okay, Ms. Bridgman, is there anything that you need to discuss with us today? Okay, you're muted. Okay. Yeah, no, I think no, I think everything's good. Um, the one thing I did want to talk about was um with my caseworker, and that's it. So, okay, okay, all right. Well, you can reach out to her after our hearing today and and visit with her. Um, I'm. It sounds like everything's going really well, and I appreciate you working hard on all of this. And so we will set this for another compliance hearing, um, July twenty third. Maybe we'll have that hearing and maybe we won't. You know, I mean, if you're done with everything, the department may, uh, you know, submit something to me to dismiss the case before that date. But as it stands right now, we'll review everything again on July 23rd. Okay, Ms. Zavala. Yeah, I got to visit with Kylie and Asher in the home. Um, she was very cooperative. Uh, he looked great. Um, she was filling me in on kind of the uh, update on on his weight and the nutrition and he's he's gaining weight he looked great um and and all the reports are good uh, so it was a it was a good visit okay great all right then um i'll see everybody back july 23rd we'll continue services until that time and um just continued good luck with everything and, and it sounds like it's going great that's good all Thank right you. Thank you all very much. I'll see you back July 23rd on the nine o'clock yes. hearing in this case. Thank you. We're conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. We are live streaming and we are reporting to the Zoom cloud this morning. I don't have a court reporter. So if anybody needs a copy, let us know and we'll get it for you. Uh, okay, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Christy Ashley is my permanency specialist. We're present ready. <clears throat> Stacey Zavala on behalf of Alyssa. All right, and Ms. Uh, Wilhite is present with us. Um, so Ms. Ashley, um, I guess we need an update from you on how things are going. Alyssa is um, back in the hospital as of this weekend. Um, she says that she likes her current placement. She's just having some mental health issues that she's trying to work through right now. Um, I talk to her almost daily. I haven't talked to her since she's been back in the hospital. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble reaching people this time. Um, so I've heard that it's been kind of hectic with other patients. Um, but I did speak to her when she got discharged last week. And she told me that she thought she was feeling better. Um, and we're arranging for me to go see her face to face when she returns to her placement after this discharge. Okay, so she was discharged or she's going to be discharged? She was discharged last week on the 2nd and went back in on the 4th. Okay. Okay. I wasn't aware until yesterday because I wasn't on call this weekend, so. Okay, right. understandable. Um, and uh, Ms. Wilhite's being cooperative, it sounds like, and working with us did what we need to do i took her her service plan went over that with her um and then she signed um her service plan and she has a parent support worker assigned to her to help her get those things started okay Ms. wilhite is there anything you want to talk with us about today no ma'am okay all right Ms. zavala well, Your Honor, I went to Lubbock yesterday to try to meet with Alyssa, and that's when I was there, I found out that that she had been hospitalized. And, and again, Christy would have no reason to know, and she let me know as soon as she knew. Um, 
but so I did not get to meet with her in person like I had hoped. Um, I had also heard that she was liking the placement there. Um, there seems to be um, kind of a, a group of girls there that are all kind of experiencing some of the same things. And so, uh, so I don't know if that, that kind of triggered her. I don't know. Um, but I hope to see her in person soon. Okay. All right, then. Um, well, we just continue to work with her and therapy and everything we can and work to get her in a happier, better place. So, all right, then I will continue the department as temporary managing conservator. I'm going to order the service plan as an order of the court. So, Ms. Wilhite, that just, it becomes part of a court order. So it's very important that you, you know, continue to cooperate and participate in those services. I have to tell you that failure to work those services could mean that your child doesn't come home. And it, it worse, you know, you're not, you aren't a biological parent. So, uh, you know, we don't have termination of parental rights or anything like that on the line here. But it's, it's just more a question of whether or not she gets to be placed back with you. Um, and I assume, Ms. Ashley, we've still had no contact with either parent. I have um, had no luck with that. I have spoken to a biological grandparent, um, but she also had no locating information. So I'm just continuing to call and try to find them. Okay. And so, Judge, Judge you know, our, I'm sorry, our service on mom came back unserved. Um, dad's is still sent out, hasn't come back, but mom's did come back unserved. Okay. So Ms. <laughs> Wilhite, the, the possibility exists for termination of the biological parents rights that's that is out there and is on the table um you know and i think that's just a situation we look at down the line to determine you know what really you know what's in the best interest of the child if the child can be placed back with you what what works best for you and the child you know so we'll we'll keep evaluating that as we work our way through the case um all right, so I assume probably, Mr. Trout, your office will be getting us uh, a request to appoint an attorney for the mother. Yes, ma'am. And, and possibly father, if, if and when we see how that turns out. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, our next hearing then will be September 3rd of uh, 2024, and that's on a nine o'clock docket. Same thing like today, Ms. Wilhite, someone will be sure and let you know, you know, what time to log in. And, you know, it'll be sometime that morning. I can't tell you it'll be nine or 9.15 or what, but, but they'll make sure you know. All right, thank you all so much. And, and for those of you leaving and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. We're here today set Thank for you. a review hearing. We are conducting this through Zoom. We're live streaming and I'm recording to the Zoom cloud today. I don't have a court reporter. So if you need a copy, let us know. We'll make it available. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Amy Prater is my permanency specialist. We're present ready. Vince Nowak on behalf of the father, Israel Renya. I am present. I have not had contact with my client in just about a year, Judge. Stacey Zavala on behalf of Xerxes. Okay. What's the update? And Judge, I think uh, mom is also here on her own. Um, yeah, she is mom. present. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, and I've marked her present. Okay, thank you. I just want to make sure that I was marking her right. <clears throat> okay, Ms. Prater? Uh, yes, since the report was filed, um, Adrian has reported to me that she's been in two different residents. Um, currently, she reported to me last Friday that she's living with a friend. Um, she didn't provide me with an address. Um, she is working currently. She reports she's working at Sonic. Um, I haven't been able to confirm through pay stubs yet at this point. Um, visits are going very well. Adrian interacts well with Xerxes. Um, we did have an issue where Adrian became upset. It was reported to me from my family support worker that Adrian was upset regarding the location of this week's visit. And where is that supposed to be? 
Um, McDonald's is where they normally take place. Um, our regular family support worker is going to be um, on leave. Her son is having surgery, so the worker picking up for her just kept it in the same place. But the child is upset about no, it was mom. Um, it was reported to me that Adrian was upset. Um, Adrian reported that this didn't happen, but um, my family support worker said that she cursed at her and slammed the door after putting Xerxes in the car. Ms. Brady, just so I understand, you said she was upset about where the meeting was taking place, but then it was the way you just said it. Is the meeting taking place in the same normal spot? It, it is. Um, we have been trying to switch it up. Um, Adrian says that she doesn't wish to have it at the McDonald's where the visits have been taking place anymore, that she wanted to switch it up. Um, she's been requesting the mall, um, but we did have a concern that there were people meeting Adrian or waiting to pick her up, walking around during the visit and, and being introduced to Xerxes at the visit. Okay. Ms. Martinez, what just tell me what's the issue about the visit at McDonald's? Um, so it was just um, Xerxes has right, been getting bored. Okay, someone was in the background. Start say that again. I'm so sorry, Xerxes was getting morning, bored. Josh. Like, morning. Morning, okay. somebody's got a YouTube feed going. Okay, Ms. Martinez, let's try again. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Xerxes was getting bored and he like he tells me like, mom, why can't we go to the mall? Because we go and we ride the animals. So like we had ran into somebody the very first time, but it never happened again. Like I had made it very clear to like everybody, like people go to the mall. I get that. But that's my visit, my time with my son. And it never happened again. But I mean, to to sit there and like the lady that watches our visit, she's never watching our visits. She's always on the phone with with other people, never watching our visits. And I've tried to tell that to Miss Amy numerous times. Like, she doesn't even watch our visits. She's really rude to us. And, like, whenever she knows that I'm supposed to be taking Xerxes to eat, she'll feed him before the visit. And then that kind of gets into our time with, like, feeding him and being with him and stuff. And I've tried to tell that to Miss Amy multiple times. But it's like I can't get through to anybody. So... Okay, what time are the visits? Um, they're from ten to eleven. So usually the ba the Xerxes he wants to eat like lunch. So we usually wait till like ten thirty, and then we'll eat. So I'll get him what he wants to drink, and then I'll take him a snack. But there's already like maybe three or four times during the visits she'll take him to go eat donuts, and then he's like, "Well, mommy, I didn't want to eat donuts, but she got me donuts." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." Like, but I've asked him. Um, I've I've already complained about the lady that watches our our visit a lot of times. She talks during our visit. She's always on the phone, and she doesn't watch our visits. Okay, so Ms. Prater, can we just make sure that she's not feeding the child other than the child should have breakfast, of course, but I assume that's earlier in the morning, but, you know, can we just make sure that she's not feeding the child prior to the visits? Yes. And, and can we discuss the possibility of moving the visits somewhere else? If yes. He's bored, if he's bored with McDonald's, you know. Yeah, we um... I've discussed this with Adrian a few different times. Um, you know, we just need to know ahead of time instead of, you know, last minute about visit changes. Last week, the visit was held in a different location. So we were open to having them out in the community, um, just somewhere maybe not as public um, as the mall. What about the visitation house? In Lubbock, that one's on a request basis. We've requested those in the past, just haven't been able to secure that yet. Okay, well, it is getting to be the time of year where it's fairly nice outside. And, you know, um, I guess, is a park a possibility? Um, you know. Yes, I, I've put those, sorry, I've put those as um, suggestions as well. Okay. I know that the, you know, the Webbick, uh, you know, where the IMAX is and all the, it's kind of like our discovery center, you know, I can't say the name of it right now, but, but, you know, I, the admission to that may be fairly expensive. I just, I can't remember. Um, you know, that's a great place for little ones, but um, let's see if we can't maybe, you know, if we have a pretty day, maybe move it outside um, and 
I don't have a problem with them all just in theory, but Ms. Martinez, you know, I, I think just be mindful. You know, if you, if you see somebody, you know, and I think you can just say, you know, I'm, you know, I'm busy right now with my son and, and can I call you later or something? Yes, no problem. Okay. And judge, as far as, um, visitations go, mom has been positive on some drug screens here lately. Um, so we would be asking for another UA today. Um, her last UA was positive, but her hair, last hair follicle in April was fairly high. Um, she also has a positive UA from March that was pretty high. Um, so we're, we're kind of on the borderline of suspending visits till we get clean drug screens, but we wanted to put that in front of the court before that happened, um, just due to the high levels of methamphetamine that mom has been testing. Um, but we would ask for a UA today. Um, her last one was April 12th, so about a month, about three weeks ago. Okay, well, Ms. Martinez, that's a real problem at this stage of this case. I mean, you know, um, do you understand why it's a particular concern that it's methamphetamine? Uh, yes, ma'am. That was like before I even relapsed. I had asked, like, I had cried out for help, like, before I relapsed. And I mean, I know it's not nobody's issue. It's mine. But also, I had I had told, which was it, Miss Amy, like, hey, Miss Amy, because she wanted to know how come I moved around a lot, how come I didn't sit still. It's because it keeps my mind busy. It keeps me busy as well. And it's like the whole reason that Xerxes got taken away was because I took him to work with me while he was sick. I understand that. So, I mean, it was a lot to for him to get taken away from me. And then whenever I did relapse, I reached out to her and I let her know. And I mean, that's one thing that they didn't like. If it's a if it's a concern to like help me, like help me, don't don't hurt me, don't you know? And I and I did cry out for help. So how am I supposed to cry out for help if there was nobody to really sit there and like help me? I mean, I did cry out for help. I asked my caseworker. She said they're here to help me. Like how? In which way? If I did cry out for it, and like I told her, there was one one time like I did yell at her. And I let her know the way I felt. And I'm like, look, Miss Amy, I really do want my son back. Like, I love my son very much. I've worked very hard to keep him. But every time that I asked for help, it was one way, which way or another, like they would not help me with with it. Okay. So, Ms. Martinez, what, what, I mean, I, I understand. I hear what you're telling me. It's It's not at all what I asked you, which is, do you understand why it's a problem if you're testing positive for methamphetamine and why the department in St. Francis are considering stopping your visits. Do you understand the reasons for that? Yes, yes ma'am. Do you understand that exposure, methamphetamine can transfer from you to the child. To the baby. You walk around and hold his hand. Yes ma'am. Okay, so, you know, I don't know, but I don't think I'd want my five-year-old getting, you know, exposed to methamphetamine you know, it's it. That's why it's a health. It's a health issue, for, to to a great degree. It's also an issue of of relapse and you dealing with that. Okay, I mean, we deal yes, with relapse all the time. And but you know, Miss Prater, you you aren't her only. You know, her only individual. You're not her only case. Do you have? Did you go to counseling? Oh uh, yes, ma'am. I'm going to counseling now, and I'm still going to NAAA. Like. Okay. I dealt with the relapse. So whenever my okay. hair follicle came out dirty, my urine did come out clean. Okay. But, but my point is, you know, if you're actively participating in AA or NA, or you're actively engaged with a counselor, you know, those are the people that should be your first point of contact. If you think you're getting ready to relapse, those are the people who are really qualified to sit down with you, talk with you, make a plan, implement your relapse prevention plan. You know, I assume you have one. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And what is it? Who do you reach out to first on your relapse prevention plan? My sponsor. Okay. That's, that's my point. You know, it's fine to get in touch with Ms. Prater and tell her I've relapsed or I'm thinking about relapsing or, you know, you know, and, and to let her know, but you know, 
she's not a drug and alcohol counselor. She's not a sponsor. She's not, you know, she's not a crisis hotline individual. I mean, there's, there's just, you, you need, number one, you got to take responsibility for the relapse. You know, that's yes, on you. Number two, you need to think hard about, all right, if you're tempted again, what are you going to do to avoid that? And, you know, that's why you have sponsors. That's what those folks are for. That's what their role is, is to talk you down off that ledge. So, um, you know, I'm trying to work with you, but, you know, at a point, all I'm, he I'm, all I'm hearing is it's someone else's fault. Yes, ma'am. And it's nobody's fault but my own, like. Yeah. And so we got to get over that. You got to get over being mad at the family support worker. You got to, you just have got to set this stuff aside and, and recognize that you are in the situation because of your decisions and your choices. And that's just the hard truth. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, so, you know, my, my objective here is, is really not to lecture you, but my objective is just to make sure that you are putting the focus where it needs to be. Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to order you to go take a UA today. We'll see if it's negative, then the visits will continue. Yes, if it's If it's positive at any, you know, higher level, then we may have to stop them until you give us another negative UA and a lower hair follicle. And that has to do with the health of the child more than anything. It's not meant to punish you. It's I'm, I'm not doing that to punish you. You know, I want you to seize. I want you to have your time with him. You know, that's the only way we get back to go. You know, I mean, that's, that's the only way we get to start this whole thing over. And so, you know, I, but, but my job is also to look out for the health and safety of this child. So let's go, go get a UA today. And uh, Ms. Prater, depending on the results of that, then we either continue with visits and let's try to do a little change up on that here and there. I mean, he is a five-year-old. They do sometimes get bored with things. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's do the best that we can do. But, but Ms. Martinez, no more cussing the people folks no more slamming doors or cussing them and and anything like that you know it's just their job is hard enough yes, you know, I, I ask myself every day how these folks do what they do because i couldn't do it and and you know so their jobs are very very difficult without being treated disrespectfully you know yes, so and, you know that cuts both ways i expect these folks to be respectful and to be polite to you too but, but, you know, it's a two-way street. Yes, um, Your Honor, I was going to ask, I have not spoke to my lawyer at all since my case has started, like, period. I have not spoke to her. Um, we're going on, I guess, uh, for a while, and I have not spoke to my, my lawyer at all. Have you attempted to call her? Uh, yes, um, emailed her, called her, and I know it's not Miss Prater, Ms. Prater's um, thing either, but she's even emailed her, called her for me trying to get a hold of her and there's no way like I have no connection with this lady like I wanted to know if there is any way that I can get another lawyer or something like she's she's really hard to get a hold of Miss Baker okay um she I mean she was present at our last hearing and and she's been present at a lot of our hearings I don't know where she is today I'm sorry I can't I can't answer that question but um if you feel like you're not having effective communication with her um I will um uh, we will withdraw her from your case and I will appoint uh, another attorney to you. But let, let me just say to, say to you that this will be it. You know, we're, we're, yes. it's, it's not good for you to change up lawyers on a regular basis. So, um, yes, but, but we will withdraw her and appoint somebody in her place. So, okay, thank you. So Ms. Much. Prater will have to give notice. We can let Ms. Prater know who that is and, I don't know whether we've got your email address or not. We may still have that. Ms. Katie may be able to find that. Has that changed or is it still the same? Um, it's actually changed. Ms. Prater has my new one and okay. also um, has my bosses just in case. Like it's just a backup. So. All right. Ms. Prater, if you wouldn't mind to email Ms. Katie that information and then we can make sure that you and Ms. Martinez both get the information on who her new attorney will be. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Um, Ms. Nowak, anything to report today? I have nothing to report. I just have a couple of discreet questions for Amy, if possible. Sure. Amy, have you had any contact with Mr. Renya? I have not. Um, do you have any new phone numbers or any new addresses that are potentials? Uh, yes. So um, it was reported a few months ago that Israel had moved to Abilene. Um, I did request courtesy workers to go out to the address. Um, they were never able to get a hold of him at the home or by phone. Um, I ran a um, accurate search recently and it came back that he is back in Mealshoe at his sister's address. I'm, I've just been asked to not attend that address anymore. You've been to Mutual several times, correct? Several, yes. I think I was taking fly at Liel's. So. Mr. Nowak, can you hang on real quick? Of course. Okay, my apologies. I'm sorry, that was a call that I've been waiting and I needed to take. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Nowak. I think I'm just about done. I'm just, Amy, uh, same Mutual address is where he's reported to be, correct? Yes, sir. You've been there several times? Uh, not recently, but yes. Okay. Judge, that... Amy, if you get any new contact information, please shoot me an email. Yes, sir. Your Honor, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Savala? Your Honor, Xerxes is doing really well at placement, um, and he is a smart kiddo. Uh, my one concern was the the drug screens and, and visits and, and making sure that those are safe for him. Um, so I think that's been addressed. All right. Okay, then I will continue the department as temporary managing conservator and I will continue the child's current placement, find that there would be a continuing danger to return the child home today, um, order mother to uh, go uh, give a UA today before 4 p.m. If it's negative, you know, or at very, very low levels, then the visits can continue. Um, it's positive for anything, you know, obviously significant, then we're going to have to stop them until we get a clean UA. So, okay. Um, I'll see everybody back on July 2nd, which is our final. And that'll be on a nine o'clock docket. Thank have y'all gone to mediation yet? No, ma'am. Okay. I am going to order you to mediate, obviously. And that really needs to be done by say, let's say June 20th. Yeah. Okay. Right, Thank y'all. Thank you, Judge. We are ready, Your Honor. And I know, I know at the last hearing, one of the reasons we recessed was um, to let Tristan see if she's on hiring attorney. I don't see her in the room. Is she here? Because I have not seen a rep letter or anything come in, and I haven't heard anything. So. No, she's not in the waiting room. Uh, and so, uh, I think we need to we need to move forward. Yes, ma'am. That's fine. I just want to share she was there. <clears throat> we are here today set on our adversary hearing. Uh, this is a reset uh, and uh, we are conducting this through Zoom under finding a good cause and agreement of the parties. Uh, we are also live streaming and I'm recording to the Zoom cloud today. I don't have a court reporter this morning. So if you need a copy, let us know and we'll make it available. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Um, we are present, ready, y'all. Haley Sapien, on behalf of Mom, my client is present, and we are ready to proceed, Your Honor. Uh, Lorraine Lucero, on behalf of the father, Keith Thornburg, Your Honor, I'm present, ready. Uh, Mr. Thornburg uh, is detained at the Randall County uh, mm -hmm. Jail, so he will not be present today. All right, thank you. Stacey Zavala, on behalf of Kaylin and Caleb. Um, Your Honor, at this time, after speaking to Ms. Sapien and Ms. Lucero, um, I believe the parties have an agreement um, for the department to have take PM start temporary managing conservatorship and the parents to work services um, at this time. Um, I know there's been some discussion as far as um, some possible home studies. Um, I believe they would we would like to look at some of those and get those started. Um, but outside of that, I believe the parties have an agreement on uh, TMC at that. Do we have any issues about the home studies or just we just no man, I think uh, I, I, it was kind of discussed at the last hearing. Um, I believe there's a paternal grandmother that's in Oklahoma 
um, that we had discussed in the one of the children have asked um, about placement there. And I think they've been there before. So um, Ms. Lucero and them were asking about um, if we could get a ICPC home study started on her grandmother in Oklahoma. Okay. All right. And and I'm assuming there's no objection to that. I, I don't right. remember one. Ms. Tucker, can yes, ma'am, can you, uh, and Mel Tucker's supervisor on the investigation side, Your Honor, um, was there a, any issue with getting that started or do y'all have any issue on that? <laughs> So at the time of talking to the grandma, there was a uh, dad's girlfriend living in the home that has a history of drug use. Well, I guess while dad's incarcerated. So that was a concern. Um, and also, I mean, she's, she's pretty elderly and is on a very fixed income. So, I mean, I'm not going to say her, you know, but that would just be an issue as well. Um. Do we know if dad's girlfriend currently is still there? She was at the time I talked to the grandmother, okay. but okay. I have no idea at this point. Okay. Just outside of those, I think those are things that would come up during the home study. Uh, mm -hmm. If that is an issue, um, I, I don't, outside of knowing that, I don't have an issue with the home, with starting the home study, um, just that they need to know that those could be concerns that pop up during that and we could end up Right. And only just for Ms. Du Bois benefit, because everybody else knows this, but we have to do what's called an ICPC home study, and it's that has to do with the federal law uh, when you're talking about placing children out of the state of Texas. And number one, they take a long time. I mean, we, we submit the request, and we have to wait for Oklahoma to do their thing. And you know, we, we just so you understand, this could take four, five, six months. If it's denied, if the home study is denied, I have no authority to overrule that or, or override that and, and go ahead and place the children there like I do if it is within the state of Texas. So if, if, it's, if that home study is denied, there's nothing that I can do about it. I cannot, by law, I cannot place the children there. So any information that you may have about that home or, you know, I don't know whether you know the girlfriend or have any information. I mean, that would all be, I think, beneficial for you to share with the uh, department in St. Francis because, quite frankly, we may be initiating something that is not ever going to get approved. So I think somebody needs to sort of weigh the reality of that um, because, you know, I, I don't, and, and I know Kaylin's listening, I don't want to hold out hope to the kids that this, you know, that they're going to get to go live there. Number one, it could be quite some time before that would ever happen. And number two, I do have some current concerns based on what Ms. Tucker has just told us. So that being said, you know, do we know any more specifics about girlfriend or, you know, is there a possibility she could move out? Do we know? Anything about you know, does grandmother have any kind of history or criminal history that might be a bar for this? Um, that's just what I know as far as the grandmother. I mean, she has contacted us and asked about the kids and everything. So, and wanting maybe to have some type of visitation with them. So, okay. You want me to have a moment, my lawyer? You certainly may. Absolutely. All right. We've got everybody back out of breakout rooms now. So, <clears throat> um, Your Honor, you had asked about any information on grandma and my client uh julie made me aware she's not exactly sure what happened but it, there's possibly charges for um elderly exploitation against her i'm not sure if they went through or if that's just something we can look at before that home study is ordered against the girlfriend no the grandmother uh, and the victim in that was julie's own mother Okay. Maternal against maternal. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. I guess we need to do a little. We need to have a Q and A about all that and see what we can find. I'll uh, I'll follow up with Mr. Thornburg and see how much information, additional information, I can gather from him, and then I'll provide it. So you know, so we won't waste the court's time, but maybe there's, you know, just to see if I'll, you know, where we're going to go with this. So yeah, I mean, and, and it's. Not it's not that anybody's wasting my time. I just don't want, I don't want everybody to, you know, hope that this is going to work out when we may be able to gather, you know, information that we could be pretty sure it's not going to work out. But, and, okay. And just other information on that, Your Honor, I think grandmother is on a, on SSI is my understanding. I'm a fixed limited income on that. Okay. Sorry, Ms. Do you have a list of other potential people that have been identified by, by the kids? And yes. so I can forward, I don't have a lot of information on any of those. Both of them did talk about Dee Dee, but, but I do have, you know, Aunt Becky and a Micah and a Yoli and a possibly Megan McLean in Dallas. I've got, I've got a number of different people that I can forward over. Um, I don't have a lot of information yet, but we can start that process and see if any of those might be a good fit. Yeah, and I was. Especially, I'm sorry, Your Honor. 
No, just especially if they're in Texas. That that simplifies lots, as we all know. There were two was, that were identified in Texas. I'm gonna say the Miss McLean name was also given by my client as a possibility. Okay. Well, let's do some quick information sharing and see what we come up with there too. So, okay. All right. Otherwise, then are we are we basically agreed? And and I mean, is this kind of the only hiccup right now? Ms. Zavala had something she wanted to talk about, and I'm, I may have some answers for her on that when she says what it is. But Okay. Yeah, I've got a, a list of different things um, after speaking with the kids, if now is the time to go through that. Sure. sure. Okay. Um, so both, both kids identified to me that they would be interested in placement with Tristan. I do understand that that's not a possibility, but Kaylin's here, and I want to make sure that she knows that we are – um, expressing that desire to the court. Um, both of the kids also are requesting um, some sort of visits, whether, you know, Zoom or, or phone calls um, with with Mima, who is Dee Dee Blankenship, with Tristan, with stepdad, um, and I am blanking on stepdad's name. I've got it written down here somewhere. I apologize. I'll have to find that. Um, that it's Mason. Like, Mason. Yes. Yes. Um, they would both like contact um, with those people. Um, Caleb also has a friend, Raul, that he would really like to be able to talk to. And Kaylin would really like to be able to speak with her boyfriend, Aiden. Um, Tristan apparently has a box of, of things for both kids, clothes, books, pillows, shoes, um, and and they need to figure out a way to get that that stuff to the kids. Um, and then then the biggest issue that I have um, and that I addressed last time that we were here is the kids are placed 30 minutes from each other. And the thought was that was going to enable in-person visits. They have now been in care for a full month um, and they have not seen each other. And um, I'm, I'm pretty upset about that. And I really think that needs to happen as soon as possible. Yeah, we did and, talk about that at the last hearing. And, and Judge, I, that's one reason I, I spoke with my clients in the breakout room just then is on this. Um, now, my understanding, they are getting virtual visits right now. They are attempting to get, I know, that's what I'm being told is every Tuesday. They've had one. They've had one virtual Zoom in the month. Okay. Um, they're supposed to be getting them every Tuesday. And then as far as the in-person the RTCs, they're working with them, trying to get it set up and scheduled. It has not happened yet, but they are trying to get that set up to where they get the in-person visits. Um, I think it is something with the travel and where they're going to make the contact with the RTCs is my understanding. But that is that has been requested and that is in the works. It, and yes, it has not happened, but it is supposed to be getting put together. Okay, well, once we get past the hurdle of today, then obviously St. Francis is going to be actively engaged in the case and and uh, they're hearing, they're here, they're hearing our concerns, my concerns, you know, we need to jump on that as quickly as we can. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's an RTC. I understand we have to kind of work around their rules and procedures. Yes, ma'am. Surely we can make that happen. Okay. And, I, and in my, from my understanding, Ms. Sangrani is, has been in contact with them and is is they are working on that. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay. So let me go back. All right. So the kids want contact with Tristan. They want contact with the stepfather, Mason, and they want contact with some friends. And who else was it, Ms. Zavala? Um, Dee Dee Blankenship, uh, Mima in, in Oklahoma. Right. You know, anybody have any problem with any of that? I mean, you know, kids got to understand some of this is going to be supervised to some extent, but. Ms. Tucker. Uh, Mason would not, I would not advocate for Mason to have contact with the kids because it is his home that Julie was, uh, Julie and her boyfriend were residing in uh, with Caleb. He knew about all the substance abuse and all that going on. So uh, I would not deem him as a appropriate 
party for the kids to talk to. All right, so no problems with them talking to paternal grandmother and or their friends or boyfriend. So well, I mean, I don't, I don't know. We would have they uh, Saint Francis have to visit that about the friends and the boyfriend. I don't know how they want to. I don't have a no problem with them communicating with their grandmother. Mm -hmm. Mr. Block, did you, did you have a... I, I already told um, Miss Bailey Stapien in my opinion, so. Okay. I think communication should be restricted between everybody, honestly. Well, I mean, any of these, any of this contact would be supervised. Well, he's con contributed a substantial amount to um, the whole situation by enabling a lot of their behavior and a lot of the stuff that's going on. You're, you're talking about Mason? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, I think I think we've ruled out that they're going to have any contact with Mason at this time. So, I've also asked yeah. my lawyer that that I've told her I mentioned it in a message that she, uh, I think Tristan communication with Tristan should also be prohibited until she gets her children back in her life the, in complete services through CPS. Okay, that's a fair suggestion. But uh, let's you know we can evaluate how that's progressing and whether or not we think it would be beneficial or appropriate. We can bring up her juvenile record if we need to, just so that because she's not been a very good positive influence at all. So time. Okay. All right. So, you know, uh, that, that's, those are all kind of issues. And so as far as them having, you know, as far as Kayla having contact with her boyfriend, I don't have a problem as long as that's supervised and it remains appropriate. Caleb, the same thing with his friend. Well, is it supervised and it's appropriate? You know, they're just friends catching up. That's fine. Now, Raul and his his family, they I don't know if they would be acceptable to look at. I don't know if they would want to take on the responsibility of my children, but they might be also. I haven't talked to them yet. But okay, just update Miss Sapien. Okay. Just update Miss Sapien if you do. All right, then. Um then I'm going to find the evidence is sufficient to name the department as temporary managing conservator and that there would be a continuing danger to return the children home at this time or impossible since one parent is incarcerated. Uh, the department will use reasonable efforts to reunify the family and uh, I will name the Department of Family and Protective Services. Like I said, as temporary managing conservator, expect parents to work services. We'll talk more about the service plans at the next hearing. And let's see about the kids, you know, as soon as possible, getting the kids together for visits and also see about trying to get something where they can they can call their friend, boyfriend. Um, and then, you know, we'll look at the we'll look at all these names that have been submitted as possible placements. So, um, you know, and I'm not saying no on the home study in, in Oklahoma. I just think we ought to look elsewhere that might, you know, get the kids together a whole lot faster. So let's let's kind of do a deep dive into all that information. Um, okay, we will have our status yeah. hearing on June 4th of 2024. That'll be on the nine o'clock docket. Mm. So see everybody back then and we'll talk about services and all that. So Mr. Boys, you can get started on your services right away. You don't need to wait till the next hearing, but they're going to sit down with you and, and I, make sure I, you I understand what whole, you need to do. I, I, I thought I was working with St. Francis. You will be. Okay, I mean, I say that, I, well, St. Francis is an, okay. Well, St. Francis is an agent and, and what we call an agent of the department. I mean, they are a, a, a private contracted okay. entity. You, so you will be dealing with the St. Francis workers, but, but the Department of Family and Protective Services is a party to this lawsuit and they, they are a part of this. So, okay. I was under the assumption okay. that after today, they would, that St. Francis would be, that CPS was going to be out of it or something. No, they're not out of it. They're not out of it. They're still the party to the lawsuit. St. Francis is just is sort of their agent. And St. Francis is the one that will be working, you know, with the family on a day in, day out basis. OK, then I'll see everybody back June 4th. Thank you all very much. Judge, I didn't know um, just real quick if I know the last hearing we had the conversation on. Tristan, whether she's going to stay in the case and whether she was on hiring an attorney, are we going to address that today or do we want to wait on that? Um, 
Well, yeah, I mean, she'd indicated she was going to hire an attorney and get involved. I mean, it, the, the issue was, I think that she would need to file a request for leave to intervene at this point now that we've gone through the adversary hearing. So at, at this point, I'm just going to dismiss her as a necessary party. If she files an, a, a proper intervention, we'll take a look at it at that time. Today set on okay. our final. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. And we are uh, live streaming and I'm recording to the Zoom cloud. Um, I do not have a court reporter today, so that's going to impact what we do today. Um, since it is required that any final hearing have a record made. So um, this case has not gone into an extension at this point. And so I, I think that's our only avenue today is to extend the case and reset the final, which it looks like Ms. Katie has picked a date of May 21st of 2024. And that'll be on a nine o'clock docket. And just, uh, just just on that, I'm unfamiliar with it. Is there there's no way to call and recess the extension is the only right. option? Man. I, I think the extension is really the our only option because I mean it's part of the testimony and and even though we wouldn't do very much, I think it's I think it's problematic that we don't have a reporter. Okay, I understand. So if if we had a court reporter here, yeah, well, we wouldn't have the problem. If we had some other problem, we could call and recess, but I don't think we can. So okay. I'm going to find extraordinary circumstances exist in that we do not have a reporter to make a final record in the case. So we will push that out to May 21st. Um, can we make it a little bit further out than that so I can finish the um, the support groups that I have left? Um, we'll I have about five of them left, I do believe. Okay. Well. Your attorney can can talk to you about this, but and, and Mr. Jackson's covering for him today. But the extension will be a six month extension, and oh, you know sorry. we can always reevaluate where we're at in the case on May twenty first. So okay, okay. But right now it'll be set for May twenty first, and understand that 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 may very well be the final. So okay, kind of depends on what's going on. Um. Hang on, Ms. Le Ms. Lucero dropped out. Let me get her back. Um, okay, Mr. Trout, do we need to go ahead and conduct a review hearing today? We had one, looks like February 27th. Um, so I think if we reconvene on the 21st, if anyone happens that day, if we have to do one then, but I think for at least till then, we're good. We're okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me just ask it this way anybody have any issues that we, that we, you know, need to take up today? No, I don't have any issues, but if Ms. Thomas has any contact information for my client, if she would let her attorney know, because uh, I have not had any ongoing contact with him at all. I okay. appreciate so, it. No, Ernesto is in jail right now. I'm not sure. I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Last time I got a hold of him was when I gave the case, not the caseworker, but the investigator, his phone number. Okay. Other than that, I haven't seen or heard from him or his family. And, and Your Honor, I, I did uh, see where uh, I, I believe a uh, a motion to revoke or proceed has been filed in his prior criminal case, but I did not see where he was incarcerated, but I'll keep checking. I appreciate that, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> then um, anybody else have anything they need to Your Honor, St. Francis would ask, mom has had zero contact with the worker for her to provide contact information and a good address where she's at. Also, we need her to drug screen. She has failed to drug screen the entire case for us. I took a drug screen actually the last week, I do believe, for y'all. And it was through the, I have to go back to my mom's and check the paperwork, but it's, I'm at work right now. Um, she um, she drug screened for investigations due to the open investigation and the children being removed from relative placement. We would also like it to be done for St. Francis at this point. Okay. What did she do for investigations? What kind of test? So, go ahead, Ms. Lane, if you know. It's, it was a hair strand. I did both a hair and the um, urine. And those were last week? Yes, ma'am, I do believe. Miss Elaine, I mean, you have access to that, correct? No, ma'am. St. Francis, they've taken DFPSs away where we only have access to ones we ask for. Mr. Trout has access. Get in touch with him and find out. Doesn't he? I think so. I haven't had to ask him yet, but I bet you I can find him. All right. I want Mr. Trout to get a hold of those 
if it was just hair and not hair and UA, then then Ms. Lane, you can send her for a UA. But if she did go do a hair and UA and it was just last week, then I, I don't see the point. Megan, do you know what investigator it was? Um, I will speak to Ashley Delgado or um, okay. Seth Sullivan. And also, I have tried to get a hold of both my caseworker. Um, the lady I've been getting a hold of that gave me the information for court today was, hang on, I have to go back through my messages. I do She's not know her name. Erica Cantrell. Yeah, she, told, she gave me Mickey Lane's number and everything, and I've been trying to call and text her, and I haven't gotten back at all, anything back from her at all. Okay, well, you're here right now, so now you know who each other are, and so I'm sure that Ms. Lane will be in contact with you. Okay, and my phone number is the number. Okay. Um, all right, then, um, Mr. Trout, I would like to secure those drug screens, and then, you know, they could be filed, I think. You know. I do not mind going back to do more if y'all can't get a hold of them or whatever. Yeah. Okay, we'll just see what we can get. Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, then I will see everybody back May 21st mm -hmm. on a nine o'clock docket uh, to call the final in the case. And we'll, we'll see where we're at at that point. Um, Mr. Trout, have you got the dismissal date? I do not yet, John. I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if we were extending or if we were going yeah. recess. So I, yeah, no problem. Seems like the new dismissal date would be November 8th. Okay. All right, then, new dismissal date, November 8th, 2024. So we're still set for our final May 21st. Yeah. So we'll see where we're at at that time. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Thomas, thank you for appearing today, and um, I'll see you back in May. All right, yes, ma'am. Okay. All thank right. you all, Mr. Jackson.